if you don't subscribe to my channel right now and give the video a thumbs up, you are going to have 16 years of losers cue bad luck. I'm just going to put it out there. Do it now. Don't take the risk. We have the rematch, gentlemen. We have the number one Kiana in the world, Bei Fang, up against no other than Faker. If you previously missed the last series, Faker did get the edge and came around with the win playing Fizz into Bei Fang's Kiana. This time he is going with the Ari and already from level one. Faker just utilizing his spacing to get a little bit of a health advantage on Beifang. An advantage like this in the early game, half health already. Beifang takes a terrible, terrible trade. By the way, he's tweaked a couple of little settings since their last matchup. He is running Conqueror, interestingly. Um, it's usually first strike. Um, it's my, maybe electrocute if he wants to play aggressive. He never has done this Conqueror setup before, so it's interesting that he's done this and he is fully sacked this early way. Fake up pure dominance in the mid lane so far um, from number one mid lane in the world at the moment. His team is ranked number one in the world. He won a favor to win MSI and, of course, Worlds this year. Faker putting up some pretty good stats. He doesn't have the most insane laning stats if you compare him to other mid laners um, like Zekka, like Chovy, players like this. But Faker, of course, he plays for the team. He definitely has shifted his play style over the last several years. And I feel like it happens quite a lot, even in other... Nice little joke. In a lot of other sports as well. These players, as they get older, they start playing towards more so for the team, the greater cause, rather just being greedy, individual, selfless players, selfish players. Uh, you'll see a lot of the young rookie and upcomers that are so exciting. But sometimes, you know, they'll just be too greedy. As we hit level three, Beifeng moves in. The charm didn't land for Faker. This, If that charm landed, he would die. I've never seen a more aggressive trade. Faker flashes. Beifeng flashes first blood. It will be a one for one, but that is going to be advantage to Beifeng. Waves in a good spot. He gets the first blood. He they both mid laners have TPs. So he'll TP back here. Tear bike. So it's going to be for that Muramana, that Prowler's Claw setup. Love this. So Faker blue flash. Beifeng instantly. He should grab the ice and then look for the EQ. Let's see. He just EQs, actually misses, doesn't have the stun, interestingly. I think he didn't want to give away the Nidalee position by grabbing the ice. Beifang will follow Faker over. He'll grab this kill, unless Nidalee steals it. Don't even... Nidalee! And they'll come through and contest this. If they're able to take away this mark from the Kindred, it's massive. Silas gets the solo kill onto the Malphite. Kindred... Oh, it goes over to Malphite. Kindred will get the mark. Beifang mid lane will get shoved. And this is already looking like a spicy matchup. Beifang just reached Challenger in Korea, by the way. All of the Chinese Super Server players are doing like a little mini boot camp on the Korean server right now, by the way. So I might have a lot more reviews to come. You have big names like Sally, the 2000 LP Casio player. Um, you have 14 Fiora. You have all of these big names. I think even HanQ might be over there. As Beifang will go down to that Kindred. Mid lane at the highest level. It's a 2v2. It's never a 1v1. True. is that why you lost to Chovy so hard? Yes. The only reason I lost to Chovy was because his jungler camped my lane and I, I died seven times. That's the only reason I lost to Chovy. I'm just going to put it out there. And I'm not over it. That was a few years back. I'm not over it. That's okay. Because I'll get my chance and rematch when I go to Korea this year. I'll keep you posted. Mid lane gold. 200 gold for Beifang. 150 gold for Beifang here. Puts the pink ward top side. Ari getting a little bit of traction recently. I don't really like Ari. It's still getting picked in pro play, but essentially, I think if you want a mid laner, Annie at the moment is just performing so well. A lot of people, like, even Knight in the LPL last night, he picked Annie, like, every single time it was open. And Knight is the most mechanical dominating mid laner that I've ever seen. And yet he says, I'll pick Annie, I'll farm and hit R and I'll, I'll drop the ego and get my LP. And he won, he won the series. You can you can do this in your own games, but unfortunately you're playing Annie. Do you want to enjoy your life or do you want to brag about your LP? You have you have decisions. And that, that decision, it, go, it, it, it extends not only to League, but also to, to real life, you know? You could live the boring life, or you could take a risk. Depends what you want. 
Do you want to be in a, a level six all in potentially? We're half a creep off, Bay Fang. Not gonna get it, but he might even look for the. Oh god, this is so close. He goes back in. He goes back in. Does he have the WQ? Does he have the WQ? He misses. Tower shot hits. Oh my god. That literally. Oh, Faker hit six first. Bay Fang doesn't get six nearly. This is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. This is, might be good though. This is bad, this is bad. Might be good. It might be. No, it's bad, it's bad, it's terrible. Bayfang goes down. Nidalee answers back with a kill of her own. Faker has that ult reset. It's not going to risk it. He'll take the kill. And I don't know. That was kind of unfortunate. I thought he was going to be level six. But because of the way the cookies crumbled, he was one creep off. And Faker gets the lead 24 to 50 CS here in the mid lane. Faker will hit the base. And game state looking slightly blue blue side favored. But it's all in the Nidalee. If Faker's able to get that... Sorry, if, if, if Kindred or any... I mean, if Faker's able to get that bounty on the Nidalee, I think red side ain't going to be favored. So let's see how it gets done. Beifang has ultimate, no flash. Ah, so sip on my coffee. Beifang versus Faker and a nice cup of coffee. I mean... Sometimes life's bad, man, but you gotta appreciate life right now. It's pretty bloody good. I'll appreciate it. We get a nice little trade on a faker. You try and clear this out. I think champions like Ari, um, like Annie, that are just always relevant, have uh, have decent mobility and hard CC. I think they just never do badly in solo queue. I think if you want to grind out like a thousand games and you're playing Ari and Annie only. I think you're going to have a better than 50% win rate. It's pretty hard not to. Champions are just so reliable. Pretty safe. As we're still so far behind in this matchup for Beifang, by the way. He's going to have to pull a miracle out of his hat in order to get a lead. Oh, what? He predicted that... The mind games from Faker. Like, I don't know. How can you predict that? You can see the Kindred hovering just in case. They know. Potentially, there's going to be an all-in here. So, Kindred was hovering. Faker has ultimate. So, I don't think if he has hands, which he does, it shouldn't be possible for Faker to solo killed. But I say that a lot about versing Beifang and he just manages to pull it out. Full level lead almost for Faker here. Bayfang, EQ, auto, charm goes wide, Q goes wide, okay. Does have flash, he might flash, R. he might flash QR. Oh, he's thinking about it. You would a Q flash, you get stunned, then you R. No way. Don't do it, 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 don't do it. Oh, I love these mid laners going head to head. Flash for flash. That's exactly what Beifang probably wants. No flash on Faker now is going to mean him make him pretty vulnerable. You can ultimate on Ari, but it's a lot slower than the flash. So, like, if you ultimate, but you still get caught by the Kiana R, you're still probably going to get caught. Faker sweeps, finds Beifang. Faker will come through and try and find him. Not able to. Duking out everything but Q1. And we are going to look for the reset. Sitting on 1,000 gold. Look for the reset TP back in. Faker's smart. He's going to hard shove this and force Beifang back. Faker right now. I actually like Faker's positioning. If he lands the charm. If he lands the charm. He's holding. Doesn't go for it. Holds his abilities and he's just going to eat these plates for free. Beifang really can't do much. A lot of Ari's here would maybe try and get some harassment and kill. Just shove the wave and auto attack the tower. Two tower places a kill. And if Beifang is stuck here under tower, Charm, lands, Q will follow. And now we could potentially look for the all in here. Charm in three, two. Ultimate comes through. Charm doesn't land. Faker goes back in. Beifang with the brush. And that was the most insane bait. So when you go invisible with the brush, the RE orbs can't hit you. you they, they, they sit. So every time Faker would dash in, Beifang instantly gets the bush invisible. 
Did it again, gets the bullets invisible. Baits him in. Baker has no flash because flash for flash for trade, remember, up here. And Baifang back in it. Might even be able to hustle himself together a plate or even look for what's better is a run topside. Malphite gets the solo bolo. We don't quite have enough for the mirror mana. Looks like he's going to go Prowler's Claw into the mirror mana here. Usually that's what he does. Italy. Mid lane, god damn it's hard lane. Not sure why I picked mid lane. I can't remember why. I think as a kid I just, you know, I wanted to be the center of attention and I thought mid lane, that's the most cool role with the you know, cool does back way back when the, you'd have cool champions, you know. Oh my god, you know, Zed, Nidalee mid, Gragas mid, crazy things are happening. AP, AP Master Yi, like, it was just seemed like a cool role. I picked it. I want to be the star. Nowadays, I don't know. If you want to win, a lot of times you got to be lame and pick, once again, things like Annie. It's hard to be cool and pick things like Kiana. It's a goddamn hard champion to climb. But what a skin. Look at those stocking. It's a hard champion to climb on, honestly. Unless you're absolutely absurd at it like Beifang. Baker does go Everfrost, by the way. Everfrost and Ari against Kiana is definitely what you want. What kills assassins a lot of the time is simply CC. If you get Everfrost against champions like Kiana, like Katarina, like Talon, it just adds another level of CC where they're frontlining because they're melee range and they'll get CC'd up and the entire team will nuke them. It's their Kryptonite. Get the hard CC, get the Everfrost. Ludens will give you more damage. The Andrews will give you sh shorter cooldowns, but the Everfrost will simply give you a lot more ways to contribute as Faker looks for the RE. Doesn't land it. Q. Doesn't. Has to go back. Bayfang's here this time, baby. And we're going to pick up a free kill. Yoink. Baker overextends. Misses his goddamn abilities. And... A bit uncharacteristic by Faker as two teams are dead even gold here now. Gawk at this. Hey, Fang. We'll try and hustle the plate. Nidalee, does she have Herald? Yes, she does. We will definitely be taking this. That's a Silas TP, by the way. We eat some plates. We're sitting on, what, 2,000 gold here. Prowler's Claw, Lucidity Boot by maybe. Let's see. Prowlers gets Cauliford Warhammer trying to get that Mirror Mana ASAP. And this is a really big power spike here for Beifang. You'll start seeing his damage numbers completely dwarf Ares at this stage of the game. Kindred secures the dragon. Get some objective timers up here. Look at this Malphite. Heart steal with an executionist. As you can see, that was weird. What the hell happened there? Bayfang comes in. EQ gets charmed. Q Everfrost by Faker. Then we Prowler's Claw R and that R just missed the wall Bayfang wanted. Wow. We do get Ari Flash. So it's not all bad, but ugh. An ultimate actually. Bayfang has Flash now. No ult. E, Q, auto W, Q would be a kill though. So if he wants to flash for it, he can. But if he E, Qs, he gets charmed by Faker because E stops dashes now on Ari. They did have a little bit of interaction. They took that away and then they brought it back. So Ari E actually stops the dashes and it hard counter to things like Kiana's little E dash. So Faker will take the base here. Bayfang will try and shove in and get tower. Faker, of course, mid laners, we hate to give waves for free. We're not, especially in high level play, they're not going to do it. Fang moves in, just eating all the pressure here. Nidalee, because of this, able to eat the red, eat the topside camps, pure. This is like, a lot of times you don't have to get the kill in the mid lane. If you keep the pressure and your jungle's able to uh, continue their lead, it's just, it's massive. 
as Nidalee has almost 1.5 thousand gold lead over the Kindred now, mainly because of this mid lane pressure here. Alphite picks up top, TP in from Faker, and blue side gold lead is starting to... Dwarf, look at that, 2,500 gold now. Faker will maybe try and posh it down for the bot lane, trying to get the shutdown onto Ezreal. These two are just walking around, nothing's happening. Bayfang spots them, we might get a Herald fight soon. As we are going to have to go around, drop the Ego, go around, go the long way. Could even go the long, long way, yeah. Give the tower. It sucks that you have to do this, but you got caught out in the rotation, and instead of going and dying on a tower plus kicking the tower, you just you just let the tower go. Save it for another day. Pretty much got enough of the Mirror Mana now, though. I'd love this buy when he gets that Mirror Mana. Some of the best mid-game... Baker, that's a bit aggressive. Some One of the best mid-game spikes any champion have. Been destroyed. Love the way that Ezreal's playing. Really nice. 10 CS per minute. Pretty safe. And you might even see these two go head-to-head -head in the side lane once again now. As Ezreal Karma like to park themselves up in the mid lane. Bayfang is hunting. Baker is usually too smart to go down here. Oh. Oh. Baker has ult. Baker has ult, no flash. Prowl is Q. Everfrost. No. Nah, not able to get it. Oh, but they're collapsing. I think Bayfang might even try and go for the kill. He knows he's getting collapsing, so he has to go for the kill here. He could EQ flash R. E R Q gets the kill. Aphilios makes his way through. He will go down, but Bayfang gets the solo onto Faker, and that's all you can really ask for. That buy, he has 2,000 gold. The next buy is going to be huge. Mirror Mana plus Lucidity props. As Faker is 1 and 5. I wouldn't say he's looking off. Bayfang is just playing this matchup pretty well. And obviously the Nidalee dominating over the Kindred. Big Malphite ult. Here we go. Blue side running away with the game here. Oh god. Only man remaining is this Aphelios. And that is Loken by the way. I forgot. Loken is one of the best uh, Chinese AD carries in the game. Maybe he's Korean but he plays in China. I forget. That shield will... I don't say the shield prevents... Because you can base, if you're shielded and you do damage and the shield prevents the damage, like, you will still go through it. The base will still go through it. That's why if you play a champion like Orianna or something, like, you shield yourself as you're basing, just in case someone wants to be cheeky in the order. Bayfang. Side lane duty now. Aker on the other side of the map. And here with a 3k gold lead. I feel as though... One team fight into a Nash at 20 minutes is probably going to be the game done. They move into blue side. Kindred on it. Faker has TP. Oh, this is massive. That gets the kill onto the Kindred. WQ almost gets the Thresh. That's Faker's TP, but is it going to be enough? You can see this Silas. WQ will kill. Oh, and you'll see they'll set up here for the dragon now. Malphite also on to Faker. Faker goes down. You'd love to see it. That's almost a 4k gold lead here now for blue team. And Faker. Enemy team FFs. That's a shame, but this game only was going one direction from here. What a game between these two. I love watching their matchups. And luckily for us, they verse each other a third time. We have Bayfang Kiana up against Faker Talia this time. Getting a bunch of different matchups for Faker's point of view. Let's see if Faker can bounce back for the third game. One apiece. Very aggressive Talia in the early game here. Bayfang running a different rune page once again. This is from Bayfang stream, so we're going to get his POV, his clicks. So you guys can see the inputs. Well, you guys are pretty obsessed with that. 
Oh, we're taking every single level one, level two. He's still taking half health these days. Baco is really good at these first few levels and like showing how to use this range advantage. You gain that half HP lead and then it kind of counteracts Bayfang's all ins, doesn't it? Makes it so hard for him as Faker will try and finesse him. Bring one of these creeps. My Q here and then. What oh no. He's actually just trying to get a extremely aggressive trade rather than the CS. He's missed five CS. This might be mean he's trying to look for level three all in. Baker won't have that E for another 15 seconds. Blowing E on Talia early like this is very, very strange. It means Beifang, if he wants right now, could look for the all in and fake up. Doesn't have the E to stop that dash. Let's see if Beifang wants to look for it. He doesn't. We just have to play passive early game here. Once again, we don't run Ignite on the Talia anymore. We run TP in the high levels. It's a lot more consistent. You're taking really bad trades early and you're just essentially giving up those early kills to get a good base in and then set yourself up for good scaling at two item power spike. That's all you're doing. That's all we're shifting towards. But he could look for a lot of trades here, but he just refuses. He's going to take a base and get a tier early. Faker also running the TP. TP back. Faker, hopefully... Usually when you go TP for TP as a mid laner, right? And the enemy team TPs are like this. You don't want to base with full health. You want to trade as much as possible and then base. And then you TP back in their half health or they've just gone through a couple of the little potions and then you get the positive trade. First thing these big tip, like these big top tier mids, I've always noticed they just won't. Any advantage they can get, they'll take. So Faker will try and even if you can get one, like one tick over a fillable potion, but these high level pros is like, it can sometimes mean the difference between winning and losing a game. Which sounds stupid, but it's it, it can happen. I'm not lying. We'll see Faker here. Just try and get a little bit more poke off before his reset. And that might actually cost him. That's exactly what Faker wants. So Faker now, he's going to get Beifang. Get a little bit of mana, get a little bit of health. And now you look for him. Ooh, ooh. Don't go get solely killed now again, buddy. Faker has to base here, and he'll come back with a good buy. Problem is, by doing so, he might miss a couple creeps. I don't think he can risk staying for this. Oh. No! Oh. If he flash EQ'd, I think it would have been a kill. And now he can't get it. Flash for flash. Really good game sense there by Beifang. Didn't. New Faker might be over that side, or he could be deep in the tower. He takes the risk, gets the ward, and it works. Flash for flash, Faker TP back. Huge advantage, Beifang early. You can see that there's still kills available without the ignite if you're good enough. Faker will TP back in. No way Faker stops that back. Dude, is. I versed Faker six, seven times. Dude, you can never... I don't know how he does it. I don't know if it's a hack. I don't want to call it a hack because obviously he doesn't hack, but maybe he hacks. He knows where you're basing every time, even without vision. How can he do it? And he know, within like a millisecond, he knows. It's so annoying versing this guy. I swear to God, if he gets his backstop as well... Watch this. There's a chance he gets this. Dude! He just knows! It's so annoying versing this guy, remember? I guess it's the pros of playing, like, this game for a hundred years. You just, you have a, such a good sense of, like, where would a good player base here? And then he'd be like, oh, base there? And that's where he's going to start throwing his abilities and start hunting. And that, these base stops, literally is going to change the entire way this mid lane gets played out. Because now... He has mana. He's ready to move with his jungler to look for the objective controls. It's very important here. And Faker actually has a freeze. He might even use ult. I was going to say he might use ult here to even try and stop the base. So he sets up the freeze mid lane and then goes and contests the dragon. That Wukong kind of inted. Faker had the right idea. So Faker set up the freeze, was first to move. But I think his jungler was inting a little bit there. Thank you. 
C C 七五送的法拉利。别谁？他没闪，快来撞他！但我这波蓝不够啊，感觉伤害不太够。I got a call today. Oh, ult comes through from Malphite. Fake and no flash. Remember? I don't think Beifang even wants to try and use the ultimate, and he won't have to. One more order will take him down. We will get the kill. But then the flash for the Wukong comes through. I got a call today, and it was like, um, it's like a, it was, it was like a, they're like, you, your account has been, but it was like, it was in Chinese, and, I, and like, then they were like speaking Chinese, and I'm like, that kind of like, I, I could kind of understand some of the things they were saying, because of how many Beifeng and Chinese pros that I've watched speak Chinese. Like, I'm, I feel like I kind of know Chinese. My account, it, it, what my accounts aren't locked. I didn't even have like, they were, it, it was something to do with like my phone. Provider or something, but like they had the wrong provider. I'm like, that's not even mine. Uh, anyway, it's that little pro, little uh, story time. Some of you guys probably aren't here for the story time. Some of you guys just want to watch the gameplay and they probably put me on mute. They're probably like, this guy, I hate listening to this guy. I don't care about your stupid stories, old man. Just let me watch Fake vs. Bayfang. Okay, sorry. I'll sit in silence. I apologize. My bad. Fifteen CS lead to Faker here. And you gotta say the when I play Talia, I love playing Talia into Kiana. As long as I don't die first six levels, I'm gonna outscale so ridiculously hard. You just throw the E's into the team fight, and Kiana's not able to play. It's that simple. My plan when I verse Beifang this year is to play Talia. So now that he's getting a bit of practice against Faker, I, I don't like my odds, but hey, who was ever going to be liking my odds going into Beifang? Probably no one. Maybe one guy. One true fan. Thanks, bro. I appreciate you. They could come back. We do have ult. We do have ult. Doesn't want to try and use it. Misses the Q. Faker's gone for the Ruby Crystal, which is really... Ruby Crystal is really gold efficient. It's honestly better than buying... Do you know how, like, we as mages used to go cloth armor against these AD picks? Dude, I'm not even kidding. If you have the extra gold to get a Ruby Crystal, that can just prevent their all-ins a lot a lot more of the time. Gone are the days of the Seeker's Arm Guards, the Banshees, mid lane items. A lot of the time, that you'll, get, you'll be able to use that Ruby Crystal later on. And then you can just buy it early and prevent their solos. Don't be insecure. Don't be embarrassed to be like... I don't want to buy safeness early. I should be buying damage. Buy, buy the ruby crystal, bro. Buy two of them if you if you want. I don't care. Just get tanky and don't die and farm up a storm. I say it a lot. Sometimes winning League of Legends games comes down to making the most boring decisions possible. Avoid the high risk, exciting plays, and a lot of times you'll come out with the win. And it's really cringe to say that, but that's the damn truth. Coming from a guy who's been there, done that. We probably won't see a solo attempt until the Prowlers buy. It's really hard to get it. Pre-Prowlers from that lethality. I'm wondering if Faker goes crown here or he actually goes aggressive. I want to see what he builds. I don't really necessarily like Crown, but it's it's really easy to play around for someone like Beifang. Like even the Everfrost is probably going to be better. As I said earlier, like the hard CC into these short range champs is just ins insane. As Malphite comes to another roam, you just want to give his position away. See if you move up aggressively here now, Faker knows you can get so much information from how the enemy mid laner is moving in their lane trust me you can it's like a game of poker if you played it it's a poker face if you just in are playing passive then you instantly start playing aggressive any mids like jungles here if you start playing like safe like you start leaning towards one side of the lane jungle that side of the map play safe put a ward out you need to know that the enemy is thinking that and then play opposite of that it's a mind game Start playing aggressively when no one's around. Play safe when your jungle is there. Like, you just need to start thinking about these type of things. It's like a game of chess. Just think 2, 7, 12 moves ahead. 
as we will back here. We got plenty of gold here. Faker may be roaming, but we do have enough for the Prowlers. We'll TP back in. Faker, he has swapped to the heal. Gonna be an extra 200 health he has to pop through, plus the Ruby Crystal. Bayfang. The 100 zero is not possible, I don't think. Not through all of that. You're gonna have to try and poke him to half, but he has level lead. So hard to get a level advantage over Faker. Just keep on trucking along. Looking for opportunities. Eight kills to eight. Even game. The little man will come through. Bit of a boring matchup. I want some excitement. Two dragons is probably the most notable thing in this game so far. Being able to contest or even pressure a soul at 23 minutes is so valuable here. Especially with a champion like Kiana Malphite Vega, you have complete control over objectives. Really good zone control. We might be able to find a pick here. Flash R gets the Wukong. Wukong trying to live and he's going to be able to do it. I think blowing Flash R there is a bit of a mistake. And we're going to come to regret it as we clear. Faker makes his way through. We're not able to stop him and Faker will come through. Put the E in. Misses everything. Oh my god. Bayfang, one auto. He played that so aggressively, but now if the Jinx is able to get these resets, it is good night, sweet prince, and I think it's going to be. Oh my lord. Rahel Badamon comes through with the kill. Is he the substitute? Is he the challenger? I don't know what he is. But Faker coming away with the lead now, 100%. This is the way that Cookie crumbles sometimes on Kiana. The plays, the kills, they're just not there. You can't, if you over force, you die like this, and then when you get behind on Kiana, we all know what it's like. Luckily, Daddy Rock in the top lane is piss stomping in. I said to one of my friends the other day who doesn't play League. I, I said, oh, it's piss stomping. And he's like, what is piss stomping? And I'm like, hmm. Means like, you know, they're smashing it. They got piss stomped. Like, what do you mean piss stomped? Who stomps on piss? I'm like, I don't know. Stop asking me questions, George. You wouldn't get it. This crown has been selected for Faker. Pretty, pretty beta. Set like pr pretty beta build, but it makes sense to try and survive against Malphite and Kiana. Still would have preferred maybe Everfrost Hourglass or even like Luden's Hourglass. I don't know. The crown will make it near impossible for Bayfang to kill, but the damage numbers on Talia just get you really don't have damage. He's got a fed Jinx, though, I suppose. You might not need damage. Nice kill there by the Jinx. I love it. Nidalee tries to set up the Herald. Faker is trying to solo kill the... Jesus, Faker's trying to solo kill the... The Vigar. Almost gets him, too. He's going to be able to get him. Solo kill to Faker here. He's going to hit the tower, and Faker knows he's overextended. He's going to TP out. Let's see if he's able to get... He's too good. He's too smart. He's too wise. He's Gandalf the Grey. Gets the kill. Gets the tower. TP's out. That's such a sick play. Such a Faker-esque play there.
We need to contest and win the next dragon fight. That's where we win the game. Stop mucking around. Ooh, Caulifield Warhammers. Attention, attention, please. He has two Caulifield Warhammers. I don't know if I can justify it. He definitely wants Miramana, and he probably wants a, a Sheralda's Grudge. Give. Give, give. Give, give. They're probably going to give it then. As Vega goes down, contesting wave for no reason. Now Jinx getting the auto attacks, and I think they are going to have to give it, unfortunately. Let Ziri scale up a couple more items, and let Beifeng come into whatever the hell he's trying to build with this shit. Once again, probably not going to be able to see a solo until maybe two and a half items here. We need the Miramana done and maybe even need the Grudge. I believe Fake is defending. Fake is bot side, so we'll get a free turret. Oh god, he's actually using Demolish. First use of Demolish all game, there you go. And... Kisante with the Jack Show is not killable. So instead, we take top lane tower, we take mid lane tower, Herald has been proc'd. Beifang gonna look for a little bit of a flanky flank here. If he can R flash, can't, and Fake is gonna try and cut them off, and that's a beautiful wall. That's a beautiful wall by Faker. Beifang gonna sit in the bush and try and bait them in. I don't think they're dumb enough to move in, and they'll just slowly cut it back. Faker. Stopwatch on point, but Beifang moves in. They should be able to kill the Blitz. Oh my god, they can't kill the Blitzcrank. It's the worst day ever. Ziri's still ordering. Ziri's still ordering. Come on, let's go. Hook lands. Thank you, Malphite. Malphite gets the Blitzcrank, though. Thank you, Blitzcrank. Oh, this is such a bloody close fight. We're so low. And we will go down. We end up baiting the Ziri. She's going to try and run. Oh, I don't think... I mean, I don't know. That was the world's most extended fight I've ever seen in my life. He has enough of the Mirror Miner on this base, though. My OCD can stop killing me for the double Mirror... The double Caulifield Warhammers. You can see the Ziri is on her way. She has... Shieldbo, Hurricane, almost IE done. And the Jinx has Gale Force PD. I don't think they're gonna do this. They do it they don't do it that fast. They're not gonna do it. Don't worry about it. I swear Wukong was so broken. I swear he's been broken for a long time. I don't know. Oh, Fake has found Beifang. Does he have support or is it a 1v1? Looks like it was only him. Jesus Christ. Faker just moved in so aggressively there. 10 CS per minute by Faker. As Vega gets picked, Baron gets started up. I don't think they're going to try and commit to it. Beifang has a really... I love this angle. This angle makes me... What I say? This angle is all you want as an assassin. Watch this. Q, invisible. He'll come over. Picks the Wukong up. Asante still has a flank. And like those angles... Do you see Beifang setting up those angles? In lower elo games... Okay, this is Challenger Korea. The enemy team was kind of like, oh, maybe Beifang's over the wall. In lower elo games, bro, that flank works 10 times out of 10, where you just hit 20 people. Aziri finally moves in. Beifang finishes off Kasante. Loving the way they play in these teamfights.
If we just play correctly and peel for Ziri, I think this is going to be a dub. Last Whisper completed, looking for the Serralda's Grudge. On Grudge, he'll take a 1v1 against Faker. Until then, maybe not. Faker's still super fed, by the way. Level 14 with Exhaust. Faker moves in. Ziri picks up Faker. Thank you, buddy. We're going to look for another flank angle. He's warded. Ziri picks up two. Can he make it a third? They might even try and pressure for the Baron now. Fang pinging. Yes, yes, yes. Go, go, go. And we'll just sit and watch. Trying to zone. They might try and contest, but I think it's a mistake. I think at this point, you cannot do it. Jinx going home. Wukong looking for a stupid steal. It's funny even how in high elo, like, the junglers... Like, that is so stupid and greedy by Wukong. And you're just giving more... Oh, I thought he's going to get the ER there. It's just like, they... I guess the greed is just in human nature. You want to go for the Hail Mary play. You want to win the lottery. It's not going to happen, buddy. You're not winning it. Hey, Fang. Slowly, slowly, slowly. He goes in. E, R, Q, W, Q. He could look for the flash. Doesn't want to do it, though. And he'll just take these kills as they come. Grabs the Blitzcrank. And he'll just keep playing this out now. Get the bush. Yep. He could have flashed for Faker, but obviously not worth. Hold flash for next team fight. We have the Serrata's Grudge. We have the Lucidity Boots, potentially. He's not even going Lucidity Boots, I wonder. I guess you get the Kindle Gem, plus you get the Haste. It's the same thing. And then maybe he's going to go into... You go Death Dance out of that now? I don't even know the Death Dance makeup. Cleaver? And you can see he can start to 1v1. As I said, he gets the 1v1 against Faker now. Wukong's here hovering. He's going to look for the 1v2 play. Bush, 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 bush. 1970s film. Bush, bush, bush. That's all we want. On late game Kiana. Almost never take anything else. Siege with Nash coming through. I think play it slow. Enemy team has the Blitz Crank. Or oh, Faker might be caught here. Sorry, not Faker. Faker's in an ult. Stops the Siege. That'll simply take the red buff. I don't think Bayfang. Bayfang doesn't want to look for this fight. You can see him hovering. He wants to look mid lane, but he's... The Ziri is just horny to go in. Wukong. That's why you want the push! What I said. He gets caught lacking holding mountain terrain and he will die. Team's going to be a little bit vulnerable now for the next 30 seconds. Is that Ziri 270 CS? Yep. Yeah. 25 minutes in. In no other region do you get just players like this randomly. And some of these players are no-name players, and you just don't know who they are. And they are just so freakishly good at the game, and you're like, this guy is, is better than any pro, like any named pro that I've seen, and just like in random. Sometimes it can be pro player like Smurfs, like secret accounts, they don't tell anyone. Like I remember like Rookie was doing that once, he just had like an account of Smurfing and everyone, and everyone's like, who the hell is this guy that ends up being Rookie? And they just don't tell anyone. But in Korea, a lot of the time, especially because you're playing there and they have Korean names and you don't know, like, the inside tech, like... To you, there is some, like, barcode, barcode name just stomping. Faker will try and shove out the sides again. Lucidity Boots finally come through. We'll have enough here for infinite bush terrain. And I gotta say, if Jinx gets to four items, I might start favoring blue team. What is she on now? She's on three and a half.
who means go head to head, just clearing the waves through. Zero's on four and a half items. Jesus Christ. Oh my lord. It's Faker pops the ultimate. Beifang. Pops the ult. Has to flash. You can see that. Asante, everybody's looking for the pick. And he'll move back in. Careful, careful, careful. Look at the Ziri flank. Look at the Ziri flank. Look at the minimap, 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 minimap. Instead, they'll cut off the mid lane wave. They're still going for this flank. Jesus. And they'll just slowly play Cassante down. Vega will try and... No? They're not able to get it. Ziri goes down to the Jinx. And this is what we... Oh my. He's going to lose. Finally. Okay, they get the Wukong. It ends up being a one-for-one. One. I got a little bit nervous there. So Jinx got the shutdown onto the Zeri. Now we're getting Cassante flank. And that's going to be Vega probably going down. Do, 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 do. Run, 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 run. X-Tech in 50. Cassante is not done. But Jinx is clearing waves, so he probably should have been done. Jinx bot side clearing. Nidalee flashes in. Cassante going to go down to one more auto from Nid. And what a game this is. Jesus. It could really go either way. Pretty sure he's buying a Black Cleaver. Might be Black Cleaver like GA or something. Try and shred down some of their front line. Maybe he's getting angry with how tanky the Cassante is. And I guess Faker's armor might be stacking. I don't know. No, Fake has zero armor. Literally just wants to cool down a little bit of survivability. As we get... Here we go. X-Tech. This, this, this is where the game gets decided. You can't... I feel like Hextech with the Ziri... Oh yeah, baby. I'm pretty sure this is going to be impossible for the enemy team to come back from. Jinx does have four items though, and I said that at four items. Ah, this game's so hard to call. Yuri almost has the Lord Domi's. Vega starting to scale up too. Games like these, the Blitzcrank is always just the... Like, you're always in the back of your mind. You're a little bit behind, but it's like one... And this is why I like playing Blitz. One good hook onto the Ziri and you win the game. It's that simple. Now, it's not that simple, but it's that simple. You understand? Just hook her. Flash in 60 seconds. They're going to start the Baron up, and they're going to try and get the zone with the Vega cage and Beifang hovering with ultimate. Let's see. Wukong comes through. Looking for the steal. Faker pins him all to the pit. Puts the E in. Wukong comes through. Doesn't get the Nash. But look at the Jinx ordering in the back end. They're able to get the Vega. Beifang ultimate really doesn't do much. And Jinx free firing, ordering, and she gets the kill. Can get the Malphite. Gets the resets. Only nearly remaining. Oh, no. And he's saying, can they end? Can they end? Oh, God. Can they end? I think they can. 20 seconds on the Vigar. Beifang not up for another 30. What can Nidalee get done? She has to hit that cannon. You have to get this minions. You have to kill the minions. Battle, battle, battle. Thankfully, Fakie didn't go mid lane. I think they're going to have time now. I only dropped the inhib. Oh, the hook. Had Banshees, it's okay. And they're not going to go for the end. Faker not going to be able to get the bot lane. Good defense there by the Nidalee. And they live for another day. Thank God. That's The Black Cleaver here completed now. And maybe he's going to go Banshees. I want to see this last item. TP comes in. This is so aggressive. And he's going to try and kill the Jinx. They're going to try and exterminate the Jinx. Jinx on the run. Malphite finds her. And Malphite will be able to kill her with the ultimate. One more auto. And that's a shutdown over the rock. There's a big battle going on bot side. Faker picks up Vega and he'll make his way out. Beifang might. With this cleaver, you might be able to take this guy. 14 deaths now on the Vega. Disgusting. Dirty Inter. Like me.
We'll just play it slow here. Play towards the Ziri. Don't make any too massive risks. Finally going to get another Demolish proc. He'll grab that tower for himself. Slowly picking away at the base. So we'll get two inhibs for this, I reckon. Don't think they can get the end unless they get an insane team fight. As we get mid inhib, Zeri will slowly poke down topside inhib. No, they're actually going to back off. They're a little bit scared. Ziri is full build. Beifang's on his way. 32 minutes in. And by the way, just take note that Faker is playing on one ping and Beifang's playing on 50 ping. Just take note, at the highest level of the, of the game, this is like being in an Olympic 100 meter race against Usain Bolt and then you have to wear a 20 kilogram backpack. It's, it's, it's really actually like, I don't talk about it enough. It's actually not, a, it's not fair. On a champion that needs reaction time, 50 ping is huge at high level. Like, I'm not even kidding. It's massive. So he's versing Usain Bolt, Baker, with a backpack, 20 kilograms, with me on his back. Like, it's it's really a lot harder than I make out it to be. You talk to any high level pro, that ping difference is crazy. I just wanted to emphasize that. Pink's on the way. Chef. Stopwatch, or is she making her way towards the... We get the Iron Elixir for a little bit of tenacity. Jinx does have full build. Bloodthirster, I he has all the items. And you just can't, like, whatever AD carry gets unhinged and just starts auto-attacking freely is going to win the game. Malphite Kiana is pretty hard to avoid, though, if you are the Jinx. You have Gale Force, but that's maybe not enough, as we... Have the Elder in one minute. Games usually end around about the Elder. I think... I, don't, I want to take your opinion. I think game length is pretty good these days. Back in my day, I know I say this a lot, but sometimes we would have a Nivea, just clear waves, and dragons weren't even... Dragons didn't give you anything but gold. So your teams would be full gold. You wouldn't even need dragon. Baron minions didn't get buffed. You just get, like, stats. So, like, the minions would... The minion wave just get cleared till 60 minutes. It was so boring. I think Riot have shaped the game very well over the last 5 to 10 years. And that's the best bit about League of Legends. It's always changing. Who knows what the game will be like in 5 to 10 years from now. And who knows will I even be alive? No one knows these things. Maybe you guys won't... Some of you guys won't be alive. That's a statistical fact. Rest in peace, all my viewers. Elder fight, here we go. Can we get the unique angle or do we just front line with the big old rock? Malphite ult near Keanu ult can't fail. But it's always better to get an individual flank on the side as Malphite hits the ultimate. He's just gone for it. And they've just taken out Kasante. They've got that Wukong, but let's see what Jinx King has done. Jinx flashes. Jinx gets the Ziri. Oh no. Beifang hold. Beifang goes down. Oh my god. Oh my god. Jinx didn't die. That was so well played. Oh god. Be smart. 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 Oh my god. She almost goes down. Finish her. Oh my lord. And Jinx has Bloodthirster. TP comes in for the Malphite. He's going to try and get the inhibit in the game or something. Forcing the Jinx back to base. Holy smokes. These Faker versus Beifang games just don't... They just don't disappoint, do they? Jinx can easily clear this through. Now they're going to be round two of the Elder fights. Hmm. I don't think they can rush it in time. Beifang TPing in to try and get a little bit of a positional advantage. Baron is up. At this stage of the game, Elder is so much more valuable, by the way. So tanky. 15,000 health. Every zero, or every zero order is like 700, though. They just can't risk them. If this, if they all, oh, we're looking to get a good angle. Hello, Jinx. G goodbye, Jinx. 
That's all we're waiting for. This is the only threat to the game. Q, Prowlers, EQ. We get that Jinx. We get the Elder buff. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be able to get the game here as they completely rinse, obliterate, and piss stomp the enemy. And they'll come through with the end. What a game to cast. Hopefully you've enjoyed the games today, gentlemen. Hopefully you're all having a great week. Great, great. It's Easter, by the way. Easter coming up. Hope you have a great Easter if I don't see you. Masters week, by the way. I think John Ram wins. Tiger Woods hopefully does well. But um, until my next video, boys, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching my vids. I'll catch you on my next one, all right? Peace.